Okay, so we finished having Hell in a Cell. And ironically, they actually added an additional two matches to this card. So you end up having a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight matches. So in three hours, you got eight matches. Ironically, they could probably do this every week with Raw, but they don't. Orton versus Del Rio was a decent match, you know, nice amount of back and forth. With Orton hit him an out of nowhere RKO, which he's doing more often now to get the victory. The Rhodes Scholars did defeat Team Hell No via DQ. Rhodes had pretty much laid out Brian. Kane came in and began to clear house, refused to leave the ring, so then there was a DQ. I actually forgot matches could end this way. Most tag matches seem to have that moment where you know somebody comes in and kind of clears house. Then they cut the commercial. I guess at a pay-per-view, if they do that and they're in the ring for more than the five seconds, they actually do a DQ. That seemed kind of weird. For the Kofi Kingston Miz match. Again, really good match, nice, exciting. You know, Miz has really come into his own, ironically. This is now what, like his, he's now at 0 6 since he lost the IC title, including that match. It does seem kind of weird to try to use The Miz to help catapult Kofi. The Miz really hasn't done a whole lot recently. Unless they think that maybe they could try to push The Miz into, again, an upper mid card feud, but it is good to see Kofi getting a decent amount of wins, and hopefully he's IC champ for a while. The Kofi Miz feud, I can see it maybe going a little bit longer, but not much if Miz is on a perpetual losing streak currently. If they're in a bonus match, Justin Gare versus Antonio Cesaro, which if you've watched Raw the past couple of weeks, is a very, very good feud. Again, Antonio hit his, his super sick, his Tiger European uppercut that he's got. Beautiful move, and of course he retained his U.S. title. The primetime players took on Sin Cara and Mysterio. Much like when they've fought in the past, the team of Sin Cara and Mysterio got the victory on them. Ironically, I seem to recall the primetime players saying that they're going to be the takers from now on. No one's going to take anything from them. And since that promo, they've kind of been on a losing streak. <clears throat> the Big Show versus Sheamus. This match had a lot of build going into it as to whose finisher would be the most effective. Sheamus did hit Show with White Noise, which was insane to see. Sheamus also took a weapon of mass destruction and kicked out. First person to do that since he started using that finisher move. Show kicked out of a brogue kick. One of the first to kick out of that move in quite some time as well. However, Sheamus missed his second bro kick, ate up his weapon of mass destruction, and then got pinned. Yes. Almost nobody pictured Show to win this match. Everyone thought Sheamus would win, they go on a few with few with Barrett. Ironically now, Big Show is your champion. And no cash into the briefcase. So Ziggler still has time for he cash into the money made briefcase. I'm still waiting for there to be a match where he sits down as, like, guest commentator. And then when the match is done, he just runs in and catches it. I think it'd be great to see him actually doing that for quite some time. Just coming down during a championship match, whenever the champ is having a match, and do color commentary. And then try to hint at him doing it, kind of like what The Miz did. Until that moment's just right and they'll claim the championship. Eve retained in her triple threat match. People were hyping this actually had a storyline going into it, you know. <sighs> Eve and Caitlyn kind of botched a, met, botched a move before Night of Champions, which therefore led to Caitlyn being attacked by the back, which therefore led to Eve becoming the champion, taking on Layla Night of Champions. And then that whole, I took a photo of your iPad, which is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of, because your iPad would have had to have been open and at the email that she sent. Unless it was open long enough, and she didn't decide to lock it out, to then come back and have Caitlin have the time to go through her emails on it and find the one to take a photo of. (sighs) 
idiocy. So now CM Punk took on Ryback. And of course, this has been the, uh, the, the special ref. The ref who looks almost like it could be John Morrison's you know, younger brother. And this one was entirely all Ryback. With Punk getting an offense every now and then not being able to put Ryback away. Punk's up for shell shock. Ref stops him. CM Punk hits a low blow. Quick count, one, two, three. CM Punk is defeated Ryback. Uh, that's not all. Then Ryback then begins to destroy the ref and CM Punk, even hitting Shellshock on the top of the Hell in a Cell. So, no run-ins by anybody. No Lesnar, no Cena. No cash in the briefcase by Ziggler. So everything people thought was going to need to happen to save the pay-per-view didn't happen. All in all, not bad. You know, Ryback will have a loss, but it's a dirty loss. So, you know, maybe we'll see Ryback and John Cena take on CM Punk at Survivor Series. Who knows? All in all, for pay per view that seemed kind of poor going into it, I actually ended up being a pretty decent one.